Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday the 14th of April 2014 and this is episode 74, Sidewalk Chalk. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. This weekend, summer visited for three days. It was very, very sunny and mid-70s. Um, hot enough that we had to turn on the AC because it was too hot in the house. And I impulse bought some sidewalk chalk on Friday. And the children and I drew all weekend. Our driveway was covered. Our sidewalk in front of our house was covered. It was a 20-piece bucket of sidewalk chalk. And we have five small pieces of sidewalk chalk left. So I think I'll be buying some more of that this week. It was really fun. Have you played with sidewalk chalk recently? It's... It's kind of amazing because you can just do whatever and be creative and then the rain comes and washes it all away so you don't have to worry about a permanent piece of anything so mistakes don't matter. Mostly it was me drawing, which I haven't done in a long time and I really enjoy drawing and sketching and coloring but I just don't do it that often. Um, I do it like... Tw I. Actually, I probably draw things about four times a day for Mara, but they're very specific things that she wants, like Lightning McQueen. That's her new favorite. For a little while, it was Minnie Mouse, but I don't get to, like, free draw what I want. I could. I just choose to knit or whatever instead. Anyway, grab some sidewalk chalk and go outside and draw something. It's really, really fun and really... It was just a good creative outlet. I know that we're all creative because we all do some sort of fiber art, but it was just really, really fun. I don't know how many more times I can say it was fun. So, and I think that's all I really have to say about it. Charity Knit Along is going on. It runs through the middle of June and you can knit, crochet, weave, anything for charity. Um, you could spin, I guess, and donate it to be auctioned or whatever for a charity. As an example, if you can say, hey, I spun this for charity, just tell me how it goes, that's totally fine. Um, you, I also decided after the podcast last week that you could make something with a yarn or a pattern that the sales were specifically for a charity. So some things are... Um, Rain Lover sold her patterns for her Avon walk, is maybe selling them again for her Avon walk, like the money towards that, um, towards those patterns went to the Avon walk. Megan Williams has a few patterns that the, the, um, the money made from that went to a woman's charity. So anything like that, breast cancer awareness, um, or you could use a yarn that was dyed specifically for a charity with charitable contributions. Anything that you make that um, helps out a charity totally works. So go ahead and throw that in the finished objects thread or chat about it. If you have a question, there's a chatter thread. I'm pretty good about responding um, within 24 hours unless something crazy happens. I try to be really good about responding to the threads. I made a project this week for charity. It is this little baby hat and it's two by two rib so that it can be really stretchy or not. It could fit, you know, someone with a really tiny head or a toddler. I will be donating mine. I'll be taking mine to the ZK in June and um, putting it in with Java Jenny's hat drive. So if you're making a hat and you don't have somewhere to send it and you would like to send it to me to take for you, that's fine. Just send me a PM. This pattern is newborn preemie, parenthesis preemie, hat by Janice Kang. And I used Sensations Souls and More in blue, green, yellow stripe with US size 3, 3.25 millimeter needles. And um, it's the pattern itself is not knit two by two. 
But I got the idea from Fiona, who does a Down Under yarn. Um, she has been talking about making preemie hats because she is doing a knit along for, um, it's a knit a hug. So either something for someone who Mother's Day is going to be difficult for or preemie hats because that would obviously make Mother's Day difficult for those moms. Um, everybody wants their child to be healthy and full term and that doesn't always happen. So she was talking on her podcast how the the ribbing makes it so that it can fit a variety of head sizes and also that way it can grow with the babies. Also, it can be difficult to get the preemie hat, just stockinette preemie hats onto preemies when, when the hats are small because they don't have a lot of give to them and, um, and nobody would want to accidentally hurt the preemie by trying to stretch this hat over their tiny, fragile skull. So I will be making this one and... No. Finished object this week are socks that I'm super excited to show you. So I've been hinting around about them for a couple weeks now. These are Mystic Spiral by Josh Ricks. And they are the third pattern for the Daria Sock Club from 716 Knit. So my pair was made with 716 Knit, 716 Sock in the Care Bear with Fangs colorway on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter. And I think that these, th this yarn has been sitting in my stash for about a year, and I'm pretty sure it was just waiting for this pattern to exist. I think that this is perfect. There have been a few pairs made since the pattern was released last week, and um, this pair is my favorite. Not because I knit it, and they're not even for me. They're for my sister. I can't wear them even if I want to because her feet are smaller than mine. I just think that these the way these colors, these particular stripes work out, it's just perfect. There are some really nice other ones though, so go check out the patterns. This pattern is great. Um, I would say it's pretty easy. They're short rows, but they're very well explained. And um, if you're looking for a project to introduce you to short rows, I think this one would be a good one. It's broken down into sections, so if you did one section a day, one sock, one section a day, you could have a pair of socks by the end of the month. I wouldn't recommend working these two at a time because of the short rows. I didn't work them two at a time. I think they just look so cool. I think these socks look so cool. I will probably make myself a pair, not in the near future because I just made these and also my self-striping yarn supply is running pretty short right now. But in the future, I'll probably make more of these for myself because I really enjoyed the pattern. It's pretty great. That's the only thing that I finished, but I have made a lot of progress on other things. This will be, as soon as I get it untangled, this is The Steel City by Josh Ricks. And that stitch marker is where I was last week. So I've made quite a bit of progress. This is what the pattern is turning out to look like. It's a cityscape sort of deal in a scarf. And the yarn that I'm using is the Grinning Gargoyle Seda Sock in Storm. It's a 50-50 merino silk blend, so I wanted something super drapey for this scarf. I think that, I think it's working up nicely. The fun thing about this colorway is that there are, in my skein, not in everybody's skein, um, several of us, uh, well, I mean, we were all at the ZK, but like in my, my circle of friends, you know, like 
you know what I mean? Like the people you hung out, you hang out with the most. Anyway, so in my circle of friends, a few of us got this colorway and mine has, I'm not going to be able to find one now, I'm sure. Mine has just spots that are just brown, like serious brown spot. Oh, there's one. Okay, so can you, no, you can't see. Can't see because my lighting can't figure out its life. But there's just, every so often there's just a brown, full brown stitch and I love that. It's just fun. I really like when yarn has just that one, one section of, one stitch worth of color every once in a while to be like, bam, hi, how are you today? I am still spinning this BFL which is from Tailored Fibers. I put the tag on the bag so I would remember. And this is mm, maybe about a third. I don't know, I didn't weigh it. I just wound it off when it got to be too much for my spindle to handle. So this is the first part of the first ply. And then this, because I'm doing a fractal, so um, what a fractal is, is you split your fiber in half down the middle and you spin one side complete and then you break the other side lengthwise to, to ultimately give smaller sections of color. So the one half will be large sections of color. So this is large sections of color. And then... Um, the other side I broke into five strips, so it'll be five repeats of this color, or of these color splotches, in the entire length, whereas this will be one repeat. So I've started that so that the, um, so that I can start plying this with this after it's rested a little while, and then, you know, finish spinning up the second part of both singles as I'm plying because plying is the magical part of spinning to me. There are magical parts to certain projects. So plying for me in spinning, that's the magic. Whereas, for example, socks, the heel turn, that's the magic because all of a sudden you go from a tube to something that's going to actually fit your foot. Or if you're doing tube socks, then there's no magic. It's just a tube which is why I don't knit tube socks except for my kids. I started another pair of baby leg warmers. These are for a friend of mine. I am using US size 1, 2.25 millimeters, and I'm actually following the pattern on these because this is fingering weight. I believe, I got this over a year ago, so I can't remember exactly, um, and it didn't come with a ball band, but I believe this is Plymouth Yarns Happy Feet don't know the colorway and um, the yarn is not showing up perfectly because of my crazy lighting situation. It's rainy today but it's not raining right now so the the light doesn't know what it's doing with itself. I did the ribbing at the top and now I knit for I do stockinette for a while and then a couple decrease rounds and some more stockinette it's not my favorite type of project because it's just stock nut, but it's perfect for on the elliptical. That's where I that's where I did a lot of the um, the mystic spiral second sock and where I did almost all of this was on the elliptical because I can't do cables on the elliptical. Maybe if they were worsted weight, I could do cables on the elliptical. But um, I just, uh, stockinette is the best bet. Stockinette or lace for me on the elliptical. You guys, I'm super excited about this. This is the lakeside pattern by Julia Viconson. Oh, wait, baby leg warmers. So those are the Baby Leggings by Ruth Bendig. I'm pretty sure I didn't say that part, but maybe I did. Eh, who knows? Lakeside by Julia Viconsen. I'm using Premier Serenity Sock. Premier Serenity Sock. Doo, doo, doo. In 
navy, which really looks like charcoal gray. So this is where I was last week, and I finished out the calf and started the decreases. Just barely started, though. I think I did one round of the decreases, and then I was like, okay, I'm done for now. And that was like three days ago. As I said, I spent most of the weekend outside doing things with the kids. Sidewalk chalk and the park and multiple walks every day. So just not a lot of um, not a lot of this type of knitting. Because I have to pay attention to this a little more than say this. Those are knit on US size 1 2.25 millimeter needles. I would really like to have them done by the end of the month, so I need to work on them. Today is a good day for working on things because it's raining outside and I'm not going for a walk in the rain. We don't have raincoats or an umbrella, so that's just how it is. So this is my cake of this of the socks that I'm designing, and um, I still have some. It's not all ripped out, but I got partway through the design. It wasn't really working, so I ripped it out. So then I started knitting again, got partway through design version two, that wasn't working, so I ripped it out. So now I'm on design version three, and I think this one is going to work. I'm pretty pleased with how it's working up. So that is in 716 knit, 716 sock um, in the colorway. This is going to be a little explicit, so if you're sensitive, I'm sorry. Just so you know, just stop listening for like 10 seconds. It's called I Might Be Love's Bitch. And I'm working it on US size 1 2.25 millimeter needle. Sock yarn blanket. I think I did eight squares this week. Should have done nine, but didn't. Happens. So this is Nooch Fiber in Stumping Grapes. It's, um, I don't remember. I think it's Morningside Sock, but it might be Midtown Sock. I can't keep them straight in my head. This is the Souls and More in blue, green, yellow stripe. It's the same thing that I made the baby hat out of. And then the rest of the yarns are from the ZK. This big square right here is specifically from... Spartacus dies. It's called Tipping Point because Melissa of Meltran Designs was not going to go, well, was on the fence about going to the ZK. And then Mary Gale, who does Spartacus dies, said, what if I dye up a exclusive colorway for just me and you? And Melissa was like, yes. Well, then we got to the ZK and I was making mini skeins from a bag of yarn that my friend Anastasia had brought. And there was Anastasia had brought, and there was a mini skein swap. So Mary Gale finished up what she was working on with this yarn, and she said, hey, if you make me a mini skein out of this for the swap, you can have the rest. And I was like, done. Yes. So, and it's beautiful. It's green and gray, and I love it, which is why I put a big square into my sock yarn blanket. And then I only did seven hexapuffs this week because I just wasn't feeling it. I did, you know, I did the ones that I had to do every day, but I didn't do celebratory ones. Sorry. So these are, this is a Haley yarn. These are almost all Haley yarns, actually. So six of them are Haley yarns. This is a Haley yarn, but I did do one. I did a celebratory type square. I just didn't do a normal square that day. So it's got a little lattice cable detail on the front. This is Haley yarn, and then this is also the green yellow stripe. The, the hat yarn. I can't remember what it's called. So that brings my total up to 101. I have over 100 hexapuffs. That's fantastic. That means when I'm done with my sock yarn blanket, my mitered square one, I will be probably a quarter of the way through the hexapuff one already. Approximately. 
new things. Okay. <sighs> Get ready because this is awesome. And there's going to be crinkling because there's just going to be. So I got the club shipment from Jenna of 716 Knit. And I'm going to show you the extra first because it's already sitting out on my desk. It's called Jane's Gummy Bear Slip Balm. And it is from Martinsville Soap Works, which is a local to Jenna um, soap stuff company. And they're at www.martinsvillesoapworks.com. It will be in the show notes. But this is the chapstick, and I love it. It was perfect timing because I just ran out of my Wolf Farms chapstick last week. So... And I love using Indie Chapstick because um, it tells you on the on the label well, all the ingredients. So I know what's in there. And um, I like the way it feels. It's very comparable to the Wolf Farms lip balm. So if you're looking for a new variety of scents and flavors. Not that I would ever want to take business away from James and Dawn because I love their stuff. But if you're looking for another, this um, Jane's Gummy Bear Slip Balm is pretty awesome. Okay, now for the yarn. This is, this is my bag. So it's, this is the bag. And you might be like, hmm, that's an awfully big bag for yarn shipment for a sock club. So this is the, this is the club yarn. Everybody should have it by now, so I'm sorry I didn't give you a spoiler alert, but everybody should have it by now. I've had it for a week. It came last week on Monday. So the stitch marker this month is a guitar, which is perfect. How perfect is that? Mystic Spiral with a guitar, and um, obviously that is symbolic of Trent, Jane's brother, and this colorway is based off of Jane and it is 716 sock in the colorway television counts as a place. I really really like it. I think it's super pretty but obviously I saw it and I was like oh I should make something for my mom out of that. So we'll see it might be for my mom or it might be for me. So that's gorgeous and then I was like that is a really big bag. And um, I hadn't ordered anything else from Jenna. So I was like, I hope she didn't accidentally ship me something for someone else. I mean, it was fine. I was ready to get information from her and immediately go to the post office if that had happened. Not that I think it would, but um, I know that there's a lot going on with her. Oh, yeah. Jenna's Indiegogo is still going on for her yarn truck. So that's why she may have been distracted. Not that I really think she would be that distracted, but I was like, Hmm, I don't know. She could have been that distracted. Anyway, that's still going on. Link is in the show notes. If you have dollars to help support a um, an indie dyer start up a new part to her business, that would be fantastic. All that noise is coming from my dog, Molly. She's hanging out today. Um, but I, I opened the package and I was like, I really, really like that. So what she sent me, it's for me. She didn't accidentally missend it to someone else. She sent it to me, for me. She sent me a sweater. She sent me a hamsters, a modified hamsters sweater. I'm pretty sure when I was making her, um, her dragon, her Dirk the dragon, that I said that I wanted a sweater out of that yarn, and she remembered, and she sent this for me. Basically, it's bribery to do test knitting for her for the next, like, three years, which is fine. I enjoy knitting her patterns, but oh my gosh, there was so much squeeing and dancing and excitement after I knew it was for me, and I wasn't like, oh, I hope she didn't send me the wrong thing, because there had been a note, but, um, the first envelope that she put my yarn in broke, so she moved the yarn into a second envelope and didn't move the note over, so, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so here's the gorgeous yarn, and it's Modified Hamsters. It has 
you can, uh, I'll open it. I'll open it and show you the colors. So it's beautiful. It's got pinks and yellows, greens, purples, a tealy color, a little bit of orange, and all these spatters on a kind of gray-y, purpley background. And each skein, this is the Kona Worsted. It's 100% superwash merino, and each skein is about 460 yards. So yeah, definitely a sweater for me. I know that I said I wasn't going to be making sweaters anytime soon, but I don't know. Now I really kind of want to make myself a sweater. Even though a worsted weight sweater is not necessarily practical for summertime, I'm sure that I could go to enough air-conditioned places to make it worth my time for knitting. If you have an idea for a pattern, I would totally appreciate if you would put it in the episode thread for this week. I'm just going to hold this for a minute. Um, I'm so excited and just, I feel ridiculously blessed this week because this happened on Monday and then on Tuesday we went to the park and we were... We were there for a while. We spent two hours there on Tuesday. And one of the hours, um, a family had some kites, and Mara was super enthralled, so they let us borrow one. And then they left before we did. But as they were leaving, the the dad gave us the kite, which was a Cinderella kite. Um, so that was fantastic. And he gave us a dusty crop hopper kite for Gabriel because all three of us were playing with the one kite. So not only did they let us borrow this kite, but then they gave us two kites. It was amazing. Um, another, another thing that happened is Josh Ricks has put up um, on Ravelry his shattered shawl scarf thing. And it is... It is to help raise money for a walk that Lisa of the Knit Two Together podcast is doing for sexual assault awareness. So that pattern is released and I have a copy. It's um it's not finalized yet. The shawl itself is not finalized. It's basically buying you would buy the placeholder to help raise the money and then by the end of the month it will be released. Um it's in testing phase. So that's happening. And it's a really, really nice shawl. Two colors not worked together. And um, go check it out. Support, you know, support the sexual assault awareness because it is an important topic. Um, you don't have to buy a Josh's shawl, but, you know, talk, even just talk about it with someone else. That would be amazing for me to know that any of you are doing that because it's just such an important thing that gets brushed aside and it just doesn't get talked about and it needs to be talked about. I'm not going there again. So what am I reading this week? Well, I finished Delirium by Lauren Oliver and it was pretty good. I realized that um, I got, you know, almost to the end and I was like, I feel like this book is better than I'm giving it credit for because I've been going on this binge of young adult dystopian society. I really liked Delirium. It was pretty good. It just wasn't my favorite. So I was like, mm, this book is okay. And then, but it is really good. If you like young adult dystopian, definitely check it out. The concept is really interesting. When you reach your 18th birthday, you undergo, on, on or around your 18th birthday, you undergo a procedure, which is basically brain surgery, and it removes your ability to love, because love is considered the worst, most dangerous disease. It causes people to go to war, and it causes fights. It's a very interesting concept. I enjoyed the characters. It's just, I think that I wore myself 
out on dystopian society just for a little while, for a couple weeks, or maybe only a week. Um, I finished three books this week and started a fourth, so it, I might not even need to wait two weeks before I can read another dystopian fiction book, depending on how quickly I go through other books. Uh, another book that I read that I don't have here, because Delirium was from the library and so was Matched by Ali Condi, another dystopian society book. And in Matched, the on your during your 17th year, you are matched with someone who you are going to marry. And commonly, you don't know them. They're from a different province. But in this book, the person who she's matched with is in her province. So she already knows him, which makes things different. Um, it, it, she grows up a lot during the book. I don't even remember her name. I do now. Cassia. Cassia is the main character. And she grows up a lot over the book questioning um, how the society works and what it means for everybody that you don't get to choose. I read this book in a day yesterday. Started in the morning, finished it well before bedtime. Doll Bones by Holly Black. Um, it was an easy read because you see that J means juvenile fiction. It's uh, about middle school reading level, but I love Holly Black. It is kind of a, a ghost story and an adventure story. Um, completely different to everything I've been reading. It was really good. Um, the There's a quest to put this doll where she belongs. If I tell you anything, I'm going to have to tell you everything. So I'm not going to do that. I really enjoyed it. It's very well written, very entertaining. Obviously, I read it in a day, and I had knit group yesterday, so I didn't even read for those for that time frame while I was at knitting. Very enjoyable. And then this morning I started Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carriger, who is the person who wrote the Solace books. Um, what's that series called? Parasol Protectorate? Protectorate? Um, she wrote those books, and this is kind of similar. I'm only 30 pages in, so I don't know how similar. It's definitely set in the same in the same world as Solus. There are vampires and werewolves, none of whom I've met yet. Um, it's also very Hi. steampunk. Hi. Hi, and the concept is that she is going to a finishing school. But um, as the back says, because it was pretty impossible not to read the back, except I can't read it right now in the screen. Just can't because I'm too distracted by my child right here. It's one thing to learn to curtsy properly. It's quite another to learn to curtsy and throw a knife at the same time. Welcome to finishing school. I'm pretty excited to read it. I really like steampunk. Um, so if you... I, I think it was Allison was asking for steampunk recommendations. I'm only 30 pages in, so don't take the recommendation like crazy right now, but it's pretty good. It's definitely a young adult. She's like 14 or something. I don't remember. She's a youngin, but it should be, should be good. I really liked the Solace series, so check it out. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is how my daughter, who can't stay out of my room while I'm trying to record my podcast, she's been in like eight times already. So you guys just get to hear her color next to me. Not only is she disruptive during my podcast, she also does not get any sweaters for a very long time. That sweater that I just finished a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, you see this? See those strings? That's not because I didn't weave in the ends while when I was going from one yarn to the other or something. Oh no, she chewed a hole. 
in her sweater. She came in with the sweater in her mouth and pulled out the string and had obviously been doing it for a while because this is so small. It's going to be awkward to try to show you because her arms are, you know, so much smaller than my very large hands. Okay, so this is a pretty serious hole. See the size of that? That's like a quarter. I'm not knitting her a new sweater for a very long time. But what I am going to do, because the sweater is still functional and now it's getting warm, I'm going to rip back the sleeves and just bind off where the Shalom cardigan is supposed to be. And then I'm going to use this yarn to make her a hat. I'm going to make her a hat because she has this hat that her grandma made her that has ear flaps and tassels that hang down. And she is very insistent on wearing it. It's broken. But it doesn't fit. It, like the... Here's my ear. Okay. So the ear flap comes down like this. Like this is where the triangular part hits her ear. So it's way too small. But she loves it. So I'm going to make her the same sort of hat out of the sweater that I already made her that she chewed a hole in. I'm going to go so I can draw her some Nemo. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string, and I will see you next week. You want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Say goodbye. Goodbye. She wants to draw pictures. She's not interested in us.